Today I'm in Altadena, California, and I'm working to save this customer some energy on electricity. We have a, a standalone pool here. We have an automatic cleaner in it. If we pan over to the garage, you can see that there are solar panels on the roof of the garage. So there's no spa we have to deal with, just a pool and solar. If this was strictly a pool, we could use a single speed pump, maybe a half horsepower. But with the solar, we really need a higher output pump to pump the water up to the roof to send the water through the solar panels. So let's see what we have right now. We currently have a whisper flow pump, and it's a one and a half horsepower. And when it's operating, first of all, you'll notice that it's pretty noisy. And second, that it's drawing around six and a half to seven amps of power when it's running. And it's around 237 volts AC. So that's what they have right now. It's filtering from about 9.30 in the morning until around 5 p.m. And with solar, we don't have the option of running in the cool early morning hours. We have to run it during the day when the sun's up, otherwise the solar does not uh, keep the water up. Today I am replacing a standard single speed pump with an E plus new Centurion. The unique feature of this pump is that it's energy efficient on both high and low speed, whereas your standard two speed motor is energy efficient on high speed only and is a standard induction motor on low speed. The pump affinity law states that if you cut the speed in half, you also cut the power consumption by one eighth. And that's the rule that we use to, to base energy savings on pumps. However, you don't quite get that savings as promised because on the high speed it's energy efficient, low speed it isn't. So really the low speed on most pumps is only about one eighth of the, or rather one fourth of the power, not the one eighth as promised. So hopefully this pump will be as efficient as the affinity law suggests that it should be. Well, a couple hours have passed. I've changed the pump out. As you can see, the cleaner is still working. We're on high speed right now. Let's take a look at the pump that's in there. This is the two-speed new Centurion pump, E-plus new Centurion. And here's our control system. It's still taken apart, and I can walk you through it here. Right now, we're on high speed, as I said. You can see by the amp meter that we're still drawing about the same current as before, around six and a half to seven amps. If we flip this bottom switch down here, it'll switch us to low speed, and as you can tell, there's a big difference in sound. The amp meters drop completely down to zero. We need to switch scales to see what the current reading is. And there it is. We're drawing about one and a third amps on low speed. So we've saved a considerable amount of current drawn. So what, how does this system work? We have two timers. We have this main timer, a secondary timer, and a solar controller that looks like this on the outside. So the first thing that happens is that you have line one and line two coming into the timer. Line one simply goes into this timer, comes out, goes down to this timer, there's a junction here, it goes over to the solar, there's a junction, and it goes straight down to the pump. Nothing very complicated with line one. The first timer just turns it on and off. Line two comes into the first timer, goes over here, gets turned on and off by the first timer. If it's on, it then goes down to the second timer, where it comes in right here. It then jumpers to this one as well, and this second timer is a toggle. It can either send power to the low speed, which is the blue in this case, or the high speed, which is the red. If it sends power to the high speed, it goes from here over to here through this relay, and it jumpers 
right to this wire, which runs directly to the pump. Pretty simple again with high speed. Low speed is a little more complicated. As before, we come out here with line two on the main pump. We're switched. We go down here, and if we're, this timer switched to low speed, which is the off position, the power comes out the blue wire, goes over here, and it goes into the line side of this two-speed relay. This is a Pintair two-speed relay that's used on the IntelliTouch system. If the relay is not activated, the power just goes straight through out the blue wire and to the pump for low speed. If we turn the solar on, it will automatically switch the power from the blue to the red and run the pump on high. So let's try that now and you can see what happens. Currently we're in the off position on solar. Let's turn it back up to the auto. You can hear the pump has come on high. And our current draw is up again. We have to switch the meter back to the six and a half, seven amps of power. And of course our pump pressure is back up too. So that's how it works. The switch doesn't make any difference at this point because it's already on high speed over there. Turn it back to off so we can talk. The way I use these two timers in se sequence lets me have more control over the system given that they have a solar panels on this. The standard two-speed timers would let me set up a high and low speed, but the way they're, the logic in the timers is set up that high speed comes on first in the morning and then low speed runs throughout the duration of the day. I wanted to have these two separate timers because it gave me more control over when the pump ran. For instance, the pump itself on low speed is going to come on at 8 a.m. and run until about 7 p.m. That's on this top timer. The bottom timer turns on the high speed. And as you can see, I have it set from about 11.30 to 1. That way, I force the high speed pump on in the middle of the day. If the solar should happen to be calling for power at the same time, it runs on high because of the solar. If it's a cool day and the solar doesn't require water flow, it will run on high for that hour because of the timer. If I had used a standard, like a tight watt or an intermatic two-speed timer, I wouldn't have that control. I would force the high speed to come on from, say, 8 to 9 a.m. And then again, it might be duplicated by the solar calling for heat during the middle of the day. This lets me cut down on the high speed time by controlling when the high speed runs.